Sorry for that little slight distraction. I am trying to keep them in the hallway. <laughs> I also think I brought the loudest one, so I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Uh, but I really am be happy to be here. I do more speaking to athletes or maybe want to be athletes or that type of stuff than I do to the actual parents. So this is kind of a neat opportunity to do it from the other side. I did have an opportunity to speak to some of the teams this year before they went off to Canada Games. As the perspective of an athlete going, uh, being aware of what's happening when you're at a multi-sport event because it's much bigger than just going to your regular practices or your regular game when there's one sport and you know everyone on your team so there's no new boy that you're looking at or girl across the dining hall that you want to be catching the eye of or whatever, right? So there's, uh, I, had, I was happy to be able to do that with some of the athletes before they went to Canada. Okay. Um, but it is neat to be able to talk to the parents now. Uh, the, like Debbie said, I do everything in twos, apparently. That was news to me in and of itself. Um, and it's been great to be back in Winnipeg because we train in London, Ontario with the team and sort of have opportunities like this. So welcome. thank you for coming. We're happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. Um, I guess one of, the, one of the things for me from an athlete's perspective um, that's helpful that the parents are aware of is why are you participating in sport? And why is your athlete participating in sport? Is it a long-term dream of the Olympics or the NHL or the national team or something like that? Or is it, you know, their friends are in it now, they want to be active, the fitness part of it, the social aspect, right? There's a whole, I mean, countless reasons that people get involved in sports, and all of them are great reasons. It's just important to know what your athlete's reason is. And for me, I think when I found rowing when I was 17, it was totally new to me. Um, I didn't ever want to go to the Olympics. That wasn't anything that I had any desire to do. Um, it just didn't seem possible at the time. And it wasn't something I thought of, but I wanted to just get better at rowing. When I started rowing, I just wanted to keep getting better and keep getting faster and kept doing things that were gonna help get me faster and get me better. I ended up choosing the University of Michigan specifically because I went as one of the slower athletes. I didn't want, could have gone to Minnesota, one of the fastest athletes, even having just started rowing a summer, or I guess a year and a half prior, because rowing was still really new at their school, at that university. Um, but I didn't do that. I wanted to go to Michigan and I wanted to be the one of the slower people so that I had sort of people to look up to and goals to strive for and people to work towards because I, as an athlete, I just wanted to keep getting faster. And then it was, okay, now I'm this fast. Can I actually make it to the Olympics now? And then it was sort of planted in my brain that this is maybe a possibility. But that wasn't my goal. I liked the social aspect of it. I went to St. Mary's. There were boys at rowing. Kind of a draw for me. Um, there, you know, it was in the rowing stroke, there's so many things to think about. Basketball was my main sport. I wanted to play basketball in university. That was my goal. And then I found rowing. I thought, all these different things. Every stroke, there's 100 things to think about. And for me, that was the draw. I, wanted, I had so many things to think about and so many things to work on. So I wanted to make sure that that's what I was doing. So I wanted to get better. For me, that was my goal. So it's important to know what it is that your athlete wants. Do they want to get better? Do they, want to, do they have long-term dreams of high performance success or even getting there or that type of thing, right? So that's, that's an important place to start when we're having these discussions with parents. Um, the next thing that I had was that winning isn't everything. And you hear that a lot, but it's easier said than done. And if you're in an environment where someone wants to always do their best and to them, doing their best is winning. Uh, it's, they're gonna have Because for lots, doing their best does not always equal winning. I have a lot of races that I can think of where I raced my heart out, our Olympic final being one of them, and I did not win. We still came second, right? And I, can, I have so much to take from that race, and it was my last big race ever, but there were so many races through my whole career where I was able to look at and say, okay, we didn't win this race. I really felt like I did my best. What can I take from it to, to move on? And so from a parent's perspective, to be putting that 
pressure, if that's the proper word, for winning is not always where you want to be, which I'm sure no one does. But lots of athletes think that winning means doing the best. So to just figure out and to communicate with your athlete and with your child, that's all that you can ask. If they can say at the end of every game or every race or whatever it is that they did their best, that is a great step. Because if they're working as hard as they're working to go, you know, to swim meets and soccer tournaments and Canada Winter Games or Western Canada Summer Games, any of these things, if they're getting to these levels, they're having success. They're doing something well, but they are probably striving for more. Encourage them to just always make sure they're doing their best. I had a coach, a basketball coach, so when I was in high school, and she said to me, because I think there were people crying at the end of one of our games when we played in the provincial championship and lost, and she had said it many times before, but she said, um, you can't cry if you did your best. If, if you were disappointed after a race, but you, you honestly can say that you did your best, then there's no need for tears. That's, you can only do your best. And so for me, I remember racing at the Beijing Olympics. And at that point in my career, coming eighth was actually coming But I felt personally that in that particular situation in time, I did everything I could. So that was a whole learning experience for me. But I wasn't disappointed. I hated coming last. I was disappointed in our result. I wasn't disappointed in my own self. Right? So that's a difference in being disappointed in performance and being disappointed in self. It's OK to be disappointed in your performance. You just want to make sure that you can say you did your best. I also, in London, can say that there were, I can think of a few examples where I didn't want to get on the bike for the 15th practice what are they, in three days or whatever it was, ridiculous. I didn't want to sit on the bike. And I kept reminding myself that come August 2nd, 2012, I did not want to get out of that boat and say, I could have done something more. I should have done something more. I wanted to do something more. And so I made sure that every practice that I did, I was doing everything I could so that I didn't have that what if in the back of my mind, getting out of the dock, whether we were on the podium or not, and just being uh, Another big thing for um, every athlete, and from a parent's perspective, is preparation for their event. Whether it's um, a local game or competition of anything, or whether they're off traveling. As time goes on, they sort of, or you should have, a, a way to prepare. Or whether it's the night before, the morning of, an hour before, all that type of thing, you start getting into your routines and sort of tweak them, what worked, what didn't work at the end of your performance, what could I have done differently, you know, I need to eat a bigger dinner the night before. For me, it was all, if I was at home, I always had a cold bath the night before, I always had chicken and pasta, whatever it was, uh, I knew it sat well with me the night before, and then the morning I always had my oatmeal, right, like I was totally regimented on, depending on what the workout was, and what was happening, I had my own preparation. For you guys, it's important to ask and important to know your child, your athlete's perspective on how they prepare. Some people love talking to their parents an hour before, or the night before, or you know, they want to talk about their performance, they want to talk about their race, their game. Other people have no interest in talking about it and sort of poking and prodding, or how are you feeling, do you feel ready? you know, da, 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 that kind of stuff is really disruptive for some people. They don't want to be thinking about those things. One thing that I didn't even realize was when I started dating my now husband and we were preparing for the world championships, we went away and all of a sudden I did not want to talk about rowing at all. We got there and I said, I can't talk about it because there were, when you're preparing for a big race, this was the world championships we were going to, um, for us, you're, you know, you're on the verge of uh, pain and training, and then all of a sudden you feel rested, while all your senses go into hyper overdrive, right? So every movement of the boat is, oh my gosh, we're not fast enough. And every little 
you know, someone moves their hand differently and your sense, and it was almost discouraging because you felt like you were getting worse and you weren't ready to perform, but it was just, we obviously were and did really well, but it was just that hypersensitivity. I finally said, look, I can't talk about rowing because I don't want to say out loud we had a terrible practice today. Because it wasn't terrible, but to me that was kind of how it felt. But if I said it, then it was reality. And I didn't want to be saying it. So I just said, I don't want to talk about rowing. I don't, you know, we can talk about your day, we can talk about people, we can, anything, but I, I don't want to talk about rowing. And for him, this was his first rowing regatta. He had all these questions said, make a list, we'll talk about it after. So we raced our heat, we won our heat, and I said, you have, right now is your window. I'm in a good place, let's talk. And he sort of asked me all these questions about rowing, and what's a repechage, and what's this, and why do you do this, and what about that, and, and it was, okay, it's done. Now we can talk about it after the final. So it might be a situation in your life that they're also not aware of, that can totally happen. And like I said, I didn't know that this was gonna happen, but when I was put in that situation, I just went, whoa, this is making me uncomfortable. I just, I can't do this. So just ha be aware of those things. Same with, um, so leading up to is really important to know whether they want you meddling or whether they don't, but also after. Likely, if their performance went really well, they're probably happier to talk about it than if it didn't go well and they just want to mull it over for a little while, or they want to drive home in silence, or they want to put their headphones in and listen to their music, that's all okay. That is, people need to decompress, they need to be able to review what just, well, what can I do differently, how can I prepare differently, all these things that are happening are going through their little brain of, I'm disappointed in my performance today, how can I fix it for next time? And you want them to be having these things, so don't sit in the car on the way home and why are you quiet and da da da, I thought you did your best and all these things. I want, you want them to do their best, but that's into it. So figure out for them when they want your help or encouragement or talking about it before their performance, but also after their performance because everyone is a little bit different. And to sort of know where you stand on that, I still, to this day, talk to my parents almost every day, but I have you know, teammates and friends who just don't and are just not comfortable having daily conversations or whatever it is. And I always went to practice in the morning, came home, and I'd phone my parents. I don't know why. How'd practice go? Well, it was fine. Like, what does your day look like, right? Like, for me, that was normal. That's not normal for everyone. So just have that awareness. I feel like there was one other thing but I can't think of it. Any questions? 